the all-new DXR8 Pro. There are no privacy or security issues to worry about. It's a closed-loop system. I guess we'll have to see about that. Oh, something's happening. My wife and I are having a baby. Baby monitors have been the target of tons of security research over the last 10 or so years, mainly because of the sensitive nature of the data that they transmit. It's a lot of really good information for a criminal who may want to do not so good things. So with that, my wife and I decided on the DX8 Pro by Infant Optics. The high price point gave me some sense of security, but that's a decision that we'll make here in this video. And so the security audit begins. While they waited for the baby monitor to show up, I did some initial recon on this device. I was not able to get firmware for this device, so while I waited, I went to the FCC website to see what I could find out. If you're not aware of this, for a device that transmits wirelessly in the US, it legally has to have an FCC ID. To get an FCC ID, they disassemble the device and do a full board teardown of the device and put those pictures on the internet. While I was waiting for the device to arrive on the FCC website, I found a couple pictures, the first one not being so interesting, just a CPU board and some RAM. However, the backside of the device provided something that I found extremely interesting and what we will explore today in this video. On an embedded device, typically a row of four unsoldered exposed pads indicates a UART bus. If you're not familiar with what UART is, UART is Universal Asynchronous Receive and Transmit. Typically in the embedded world, a UART bus is going to be used to host the serial console and more importantly, the command line for your device. A lot of the times, manufacturers will close these things off so the end user cannot get a hold of them them, but also a lot of times they are left open for the user to possibly get a root shell on the device. So today, we're going to break down the, the DXR8 Pro and see what trouble we can get ourselves into on this device. After some fairly uneventful recon where I definitely didn't cut my thumb open, several screws are revealed that will give you access to the rest of the board. There are some cables here we need to disconnect. That pops out pretty easily. We'll kind of leave the board open like this. Now, you may already see what I saw on the FCC diagram. Here we have a row of pins that say 3.3 TX RX ground and some other ones that I'm not too sure about. So I'll validate that the ground pin is actually on the ground plane by touching it to somewhere else. It's exposed metallic on the device. That there means that these two, the ground pin and the ground plane, are touching. Also, we're going to measure the voltage across the 3.3 volt pin and the ground. It should read out to 3.3 volts and minus 3.3 because we're backwards. So that's correct there. The TX pin should be reading some kind of voltage if it's outputting text. We'll make sure that the UART is actually outputting before we go ahead and hook it up to the oscope. It's pretty hot right now. It's a full 3.3 volts. So this device is outputting text on the UART panel, pretty cool. And you see it fluctuating there because there are things going on and off at all times. RX pin, nothing too crazy going on there. It typically floats at around 3.3 and it might move around when we actually give it input. All the voltages look good on UART. Let's hook it up to a device to actually be able to use the serial port as intended. After a uh, questionable soldering job, I have four pin headers here soldered onto what used to be the 3.3 volt transmit, receive, and ground. Normally in these videos I've seen on YouTube, a lot of people use kind of fancier tools like a bus pirate. I wanted to make this video as approachable as possible to somebody who may want to take this idea on and do it with a home router or an IoT device. Instead of one of those tools, we're actually going to use an Arduino. So because an Arduino is actually two chips, it's an Arduino and another Arduino that acts as a serial converter between the board and the USB port, we can actually just hang the Atmega chip that the board comes with in reset mode by tying the reset pin to ground. This is green cable here. And that will actually just turn this whole board into a TTL logic to USB converter that will show up as a serial device on your computer. Step one, we need to tie the receive pin to the transmit pin. Then we plug in the transmit pin to the receive pin. And then we have to just tie together the ground of the two pins to make sure that they have a common ground. And then with those two things set up, this board will actually uh, connect into my computer. And let's see if we can use this to get a console on the device. So here we are, we are back in our Linux environment. Uh, we plugged in the Arduino, and if the Arduino is seen by the computer, we're gonna do ls slash dev grep for ACM. It's gonna show up as TTY ACM zero, awesome. Now we can use one of two commands to actually view the serial port here. So the part one command is gonna be a screen or the other is going to be Minicom. I like Minicom because I'm more used to it. Uh, you do need to use sudo if your current user is not in the dialers group. And we'll do Minicom tech D for device and we'll do dev TTY ACM zero. At this point, we have to set up a few things to make sure that the baud rate and the parity bits and everything are set up so that our device can talk to our Arduino and then to us. So to do that, we'll do control A and O, letter O. 
And we'll go down to serial port setup with our arrow keys and hit enter. You can assume that a device is one of two baud rates, either 1115200 8N1, or it's 9600 8N1. The 8N1 is pretty common, but this almost never changes, but the baud rate is one of those two. We're gonna start off with this one, we'll change it later if it's not. And then also we wanna hit F to disable hardware flow control. We're gonna get out of here by hitting escape and enter, or escape twice. And then this is it. We're gonna power on our device and see if we get ourselves a little shell. Oh, something's happening. Okay, all right, we got a lot of good data here. This, okay, so first of all, first try getting the data off of the bus like this, it's almost never happened. Um, I'm not seeing anything very Linux-like. I'm seeing a lot of GPIO LCD stuff. Well, there's the, the name of the LCD screen. I can probably use this to buy, buy a new one. That's pretty cool. Let's see if we have an actual shell. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, interesting. So a lot of the times these devices, they actually ground the TX pin or the RX pin when you uh, when you ship it. So the fact that we can actually interact by hitting the enter key is pretty cool, but it doesn't look like we're actually in a shell. So either we're in Linux and we're in a program or we're in a uh, limited shell and maybe like an RTOS. So let's do a help menu and see what we got going on here. Okay, so this is looking pretty heavily like a RTOS here. Let's do VCS and see what's going on. Uh, let's do VCS all. Interesting. Well, here are the libraries that we lo are looking at. So we have everything from, ooh, Cypher. Nice. Okay, that makes me feel good because it means that they're actually maybe in Cyphering going on on the uh, the RF side of this, which I'm pretty happy with. But we'll take that, we'll check that out later. Um, I want to make this battery ADC thing go away. So we'll do help, and I think I saw a yeah. We'll do set level zero, and now only the speaker message comes on, which is good. Cool, so we're in a limited shell. Um, I do want to do some Googling and figuring out what this Sonics thing. Oh, interesting. Okay, Sonics is the board manufacturer. It's an ARM Cortex M0 CPU based off the RTX real-time OS. Interesting. If I'm in an RTOS, I probably can do something where I can dump memory. System, yeah, physical memory read write, sweet. There we go, okay, cool. So what I could do is I could write a script where I rip the memory out of memory based off of the registers. Thanks for watching this video. I appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video where I rip the firmware out of memory either through this console or using the spy flash chip. We'll see how it goes. See you next time. Go watch this video. Go go click. It's good. I, sw I promise. I promise it's good.